three, What's two, up, and one. Howdy, partner. What's up? What's How crack you doing? What's crack <laughs> You know, just chilling. Hey, how's it going, guys? Miss you. We love you. Uh, welcome to episode 17. You're probably wondering why we look so decked out country, why we look rugged as ever. That's because <laughs> we got the most rugged guy in Valencia County, possibly the state. You know, he's debatable. The, he's the king of New Mexico, the underground king, the legend, my father, Brian Griego. What's up, Dad? Hey, son. How you doing? What's hey, up? Brandon. How you doing? Good. 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 So, <clears throat> I decided we gotta we gotta get decked out country for my dad because yeah. when this guy comes around, you gotta be ready to roll. There's no way to do it right. He might just have us go outside and throw hay, you know. After this, you gotta just be ready. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wear, can't wear shorts to my house. You yeah, you can't know. wear shorts. You gotta have long sleeves. I you gotta that the hard way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Brandon, every time Brandon would come over, my dad's like, "Yeah, you could play with the kids, but you gotta go water those four trees before." <laughs> it's just like a, it's like you know how you go to the Godfather's house and you like pay him respect. It's yeah. like when you go to your house, you gotta like go do a task for you. <laughs> it's true, but it's not bad. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. Learn something new. So, uh, for those of you listeners <clears throat> watching. Uh, this what we have set up right here is kind of special because everything here kind of pays tribute to you like this is the deer that me and you shot together this is the buckle that you want roping one of many and then this is uh one of your ropes that you've been using lately so today yeah. is a cowboy special and we're happy to have you dad thank you for yeah. coming on thanks thank for having for, me uh do you want to kind of tell us like a little bit about yourself like you know, they see us all country and rugged and stuff, but, like, have you always been, like, country and rugged and into horses and stuff? My dad was. My dad was a hunter. He was uh, not as much uh, rodeo and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. He was a, he was a, he owned horses. We grew up kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, rough. You know, we, we, we learned how to work at a young age. And uh, I think my dad and uh, my brothers are actually contributed a lot to who I am. I, I wasn't the person I am today. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the person I am today without them. You know, I was more of a quiet kid. You know, I, I didn't really, I like to draw. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really like sports. You know, I wasn't the ruggedest guy. Mm -hmm. But my brothers and my father, I, I got, there's, there's seven kids in my family. And my dad is like John Wayne. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they brought out the best in me. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they got me into wrestling. I didn't like it that much, but eventually I, I had it in me somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now I'm grateful that they did. That's good. So That's awesome. they kinda of pulled it out of you yeah. and just at the time you're probably just like, Oh, this sucks, like I'm the youngest, like they're making me do these sports I don't like. Yeah. You know, they're making me work outside. My dad has me with a shovel at like seven yeah. years old. Yeah. And then now you're old and like you like enjoy that kind of stuff it's weird huh i do i crave it i, I, <laughs> I tell everyone i like i i tell everyone that like knows you or doesn't know you i'm like my dad like runs circles around me yeah like you guys think i work hard like my dad literally like he'll work 12 hour days and then go home and then jump on his tractor for two hours then rope on his horse it's like never <laughs> it doesn't stop with you and like it it's it sounds like it's not true but it really yeah. is like ask my mom, ask anyone that knows you. It's like, where's my dad? I always oh, out there. He's disking the field. <laughs> it's like, dude, just slow down. But that's how I feel every time I go over. Where's Brian? And you just see lights. <laughs> it's, it's 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 what I love to do. Yeah, it ain't even work to me. You know what I mean? I love being on the tractor. I love rope, being on my horses. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, something I'm passionate about. So for me, it's not even work. You know? Yeah. And. Uh, that's something I'm thankful for that you kind of like in you even kind of installed in Brandon is like just learning how to work and like work comes before fun, you know, yeah. like there's a reward for working. Yeah. You put in work, you dig that ditch, you know, there's a reward at the end, you know, like you would kind of bribe me like with like at the time I used to like like the PlayStation. Yeah, I had a PlayStation. So remember like Crash Bandicoot yeah. and Spyro and all that. And you'd be like, if you want that crash game, like you got to dig that one mile ditch. It, it was even. But it, I wanted it so much, I would just go crazy. It was even easier than that. I'd just be like, we're gonna take you to McDonald's. If you, <laughs> if you cut weeds yes. for three hours. Can I get a boy? Can I get a boy toy this time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you a boy toy. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. I know. But I, I, I mean, it's it's benefited me 
my mentality even at work you know yeah you get people that are just too afraid to even lift a pinky yeah for anything and like we know that there's there's a there's like a reward for working hard and not even does it have to be like something physical it's just you knowing that you accomplished something hard you know yeah like i got through that you know i got through that challenge i'm a little bit tougher now yeah and i know that's a good thing too like that you guys installed and like how you installed and josh luke and hannah and like even in me is like nowadays people don't want to work and they just feel entitled to have something you Mm -hmm. know but like Like handouts exactly and like you could see with josh or even you you when you work for something and you get that recognition it's just like oh yeah and at the end of the day when you're tired and you just look outside at that fence you built or or you're riding a horse a good horse that you put the miles on that Mm -hmm. you got going good there's nothing you know it's just even if nobody notices Mm -hmm. you yourself have that satisfaction yes so you you're kind of known as like i mean even in like the rodeo realm like as a good horseman like you're known for breaking horses and buying horses and you you like to rope right like that's like your hobby um like how old were you like when you got like your first horse that you really like took ownership of and like were you young like were you Uh, honestly i i kind (sighs) of grew up you know like i said around horses more more like my dad was more into the hunting thing and all Mm -hmm. that but as far as rodeo goes um it it came later in life i had always my i had a brother that was a professional bull rider Mm -hmm. and another brother another couple of brothers that rode bulls and they always had that that uh that uh opportunity that i didn't have right when i was younger and i always felt like "Ah, that that might have been something i wanted you know I, i missed out on you know but you know <clears throat> so later on like when my oldest brother Dwayne he he started uh he stopped riding bulls and started roping I I was like wow I, I missed out on the bull riding you know what that's probably I, I am going to do this roping thing I am going to do it and so I just went and bought me the ugliest horse you ever saw <laughs> didn't know nothing showed up at practice over there in uh, Busky Farms and just started, just started throwing it coming out of the box chasing the steers doing whatever and the rest is history. Dang, you know, I learned dang. a lot since then. Uh, I'm by no means no great roper or anything like that, but it's it's something that I love to do, and <clears throat> I feel I'm competitive for my level. Yeah. And uh, no, I see it. Just, I mean, I'll tell. We'll, yeah. I'll be like, hey, go watch my dad, and like, I don't know if you do better under pressure or what, but every time I like tell someone like, hey, you know, do one for us or run around, you always double hock it or you throw the head, <laughs> and yeah. I. I I see it from the outside and I respect it because like I've practiced with you a couple times and it's like no joke like it's not like you just go your horse runs right up to it and you throw the rope it's like you got to have control of the horse while you're in full focus of the steer in front of you yeah so like if you're roping and your arm goes a little bit to the left that horse is going to do whatever you tell it to do right so you you're like multitasking like you're focusing on your right hand roping and then also you're focusing on controlling your horse and so they both have, both have to be in sync. Like you can't yeah. like, you know, get right up to the horse and just throw the rope like random. Like right. it's two things in one. And I <clears throat> I struggle with it hard. Like wow. And you've thrown the rope a couple times at the house. Like even it's just hard. throwing the rope yeah. like for the dummy, it's hard. <laughs> it's it's my golf. You know, it's yeah. my therapy. You know, that's just something that I probably waste more hours out there in the arena playing around. But you know what? It brings my, me and my brothers together. It brings me and my friends together. My son. You know. <clears throat> It's a, it's just a good place to just bond and and, yeah. uh, and have fun, you know, and just spend time together, make memories. Yeah, you that's know, it. We, yeah, that's what it's all about, making memories. Me and my brother Joe have been re- roping like every day now. And we just like, there's things we witness. We'll we'll do a fast run or something that maybe nobody else will ever. Mm-hmm. They didn't. They, they might not even believe us what we right. did, but we have that. We share that. That's like you know? your guys' version of like a hole in one. Yeah, you know? exactly. That so you guys see for yourselves. Yeah, and... so it, it's it's. It wouldn't be no fun unless I shared it with somebody. For yeah. sure. So I've That's awesome. I've shared a lot with you. I've taken a lot of people riding in the mountains or, or yeah. even just the ditch bank or even leading somebody around. Whatever it is, whatever level it was, I just like to share that with people. For sure. You know, it's a different experience <clears throat> being on a horse and like I have like I have countless memories. Like they're all kind of coming back to me. But like since I was like five years old, I remember <laughs> being on horses that like you just bought and you're like. 
I'm like, is it broke? You're like, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I take me like up the mountain range I on like did. some I challenged fresh you. horse. When you were little, I used to challenge you. I Those were fun. Though, I can looking remember back. being on a ridge this wide. You know, you on your own horse, yeah. me on my own horse. I mean, that horse could have went one way or another, but yep. it, it built confidence in you. It I, did. I believe it helped know. me. Uh, like keep my composure under like tight pressure yeah because i remember there's times like you said we were on a ridge where like if my horse if i steered my horse to the right i'm tumbling down that mountain and it's like josh like focus like stay keep your eye on me and just and as a little kid i'm like you know kind of scared whatever but at the end of the day getting through it it's like dang i can't believe we did that like yeah we almost died but it was fun <laughs> we got lost a couple times like and honestly you know you you always had faith that i knew where we were going yeah or, or that i knew what i was doing when yeah. i when half the time i didn't <laughs> and uh, but you know what i mean it, it always worked out we i'm got, sure that helped we, you with like being a leader too oh, yeah, though you know some like, tight spots and and there were times where me and josh were out in the wilderness like in the middle of nowhere not knowing what way to get home you know what i mean mm -hmm. and, I, and i would just try to comfort him and just tell him hey look don't worry man we just got to go over this ridge and we'll be there or whatever and one more ridge <laughs> <laughs> just one more. i like, know the sun went down an hour yeah. ago but yeah, don't worry I, i've been here before don't worry about those wolves howling right behind us we'll be okay <laughs> <laughs> i remember exactly. going like with you and like thought the joe yeah and uh like just there was moments like where you just are so stressed out Thought the Joe's like, I know the trail home is this way. And you're like, no, I think it's this way. And having to just, you know, we had a moment where we even broke apart, you know. He was yeah. so, st we were so sure that it was the right way. And thought the Joe was sh so sure that it wasn't. Yeah. And we, were, we had to have that moment where we kind of like even split for a while, remember? Yeah. yeah. And it was like, those moments though, those stressed out moments, like going, like having my job now and like, like this thing that people are like stressed out about. Like, I'm not, like, it doesn't even phase me. Because, like, we've been through those moments where it's, like, how are you going to get home? Right. You know? And people are, like, right. I don't know. Even, like, my close friends. You don't stress. Like, me, that's where me and you are yeah. kind of the same. We see, like, light and everything. But, like, people I know, like, will stress out, like, over something so small. Yeah. And let it, like, mess with their mentality. And it's, like, you got to just brush them off. You know? You're like a boxer just sliding the punches, like. Right. You know, you can't freak out about the baby jabs, you know, you got to just really know when the big punches are coming. Exactly. You know, the little jabs, you just kind of do the rope-a-dope and through <laughs> life. Yeah. Right? And you know what the rope-a-dope is? The rope-a-dope. Yeah, you just roll them off. That's what Muhammad Ali used oh, to do. Yeah. So Muhammad Ali, the way he won all his fights is he would just, it would look like he was getting beat up, but really he's just letting that guy expend all his punches. So he's just rope-a-dope, you know? And that guy, <laughs> finally, when Frazier put his hands down... Boom. <laughs> so the yeah, yeah. goes crazy. Yeah. yeah. We just doing the rope a dope through life, you know? Yep. Can't be freaking out. You gotta be like dope. gotta be like Sean O'Malley. Just kidding. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> so like you like you had me kind of like at a younger age, you know, like I was your first child and I'm sure I probably wasn't like planned like how you know you guys wanted it to. It was kinda of like one of those scenes where it was like, Oh dang. You know, you were with mom, you're still with mom. And you guys probably had that moment where you're like, what do we do? You know, like, right. you had me when you were, what, 21? Yeah. That's a, I'm 27 now. <clears throat> and if I had a kid now, I'd probably be freaking out. Yeah. You know? Well, what made it a little stressful for me was that I, I didn't even have, like, a full-time job when I had you. I mean, when I, I think when I finally gave birth to you, I, I, I finally got a, a good job or yeah. whatever. But I think uh, there was a lesson that the Lord gave me through all that because my whole life everything came kind of easy you know what i mean wrestling you know i was you know in the marines everything was just you know hey i'm gonna be the top guy here whatever mm -hmm. so i had that pride which isn't good mm -hmm. and i think the lord was trying to humble me and, and you know what after a while you know i was like you know i was you know i'd be embarrassed to tell people hey well you know i'm still you know trying to get it together i'm yeah. working part-time and doing and after a while i was like you know what it, it is what it is, you know what I mean? And uh, God, I started seeking Him and a relationship with Him instead of just using Him to try to get me what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So good. when I started spending time with God and, and, and trusting Him to guide my life, I think that's when everything fell into place. All of a sudden, the, the more I trusted Him and the more I didn't care about that stuff, the more He entrusted me 
with that stuff. You know what I mean? He finally gave me a job. He finally mm-hmm. gave me security. You know what I mean? I finally got a home. You know, all these things that, and along the way, I had to remind myself to be humble. That this isn't me. This mm-hmm. isn't me because I'm Brian. This is God that gave this to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so true. I always look at it that way in everything I do. You know what I mean? So kind of just taught you to that you're not really the, the, you're the leader in your own life. He's like the real leader in your right. life. Right. Like like when you were younger, it's like it was all me, you know. Which is cool. I'm gonna, but yeah, I'm cool with God, but I'm the one who's really going in. Yeah. I'm the top dog. I'm going to be the head with, class. With God's reads. help, I'm going to do this or that. Yeah. You know, it ain't like that. You know, yeah, yeah. that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. So, like, you, I mean, obviously, you were a wrestler, you were a state champ on the wall and stuff. Like, do you think that kind of helped your mentality, like going through the Marines and stuff like that? Oh, definitely. It <clears throat> definitely helped. Uh, after wrestling, everything else is easy. That's that's the, the quote, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that's why I made. I may I even made Luke wrestle, my son Luke. Mm-hmm. You wrestled, you wrestled because you know, it's it's the greatest challenge being in there and just wanting to quit, wanting to give up. And I, I wanted to share that with all you guys, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I felt like I did. I I coached wrestling for twelve years and I put through a lot of young guys and you know what? They're they're yeah. better for it. Oh yeah. I mean? They're better for it. That's why I say you're like the like the godfather of Belen because you're really like the stepfather of Belen, you know? Like everyone, you were kind of everyone's like stepdad in a way. Like, and even, you're probably even someone's only like male figure in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of fatherless kids out there that you were the kind of their father, you know, on the mat. You were, yeah. you were coaching them. Even off the mat, you were teaching, like on road trips, there's kids that didn't have rides that we would take. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you just teach them life lessons. You know, it's more than just wrestling, it is, yeah. it's yeah. like being a man. It's like being like not yeah. skipping steps, things like that. That's that's kind of and that's what inspired me to be a wrestling coach because I just see the way all these other young guys look at you and they just appreciate you for being like a <clears throat> father figure in their life, <clears throat> not just in wrestling but just being being a rock. Yeah, you know you're you're a rock in so many people's lives. So many you go we go to like any high school event or anything and people still go up to you that are like. 30 years old hey coach brian what's up like they still call you coach and i i just think that's cool you know well i think it all comes with uh and you've experienced this now is that you get more by giving than receiving yeah you know what i mean when i and and it may not be something that that you want that i'll give you yeah but i'm going to give you some roughness i'm going to give you some some lessons in life i'm going to do things that are going to that are going to make you better but Instead of being selfish, I think we live in a selfish society nowadays. You know, I, I'm divorced because I, my wife ain't doing this, or, she, or I'm not getting this, or I'm not me, 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 me. You know what? What I found in life, the more you give, the more you give of yourself. I don't ask myself, okay, what, what can my family give me, you know? <clears throat> I ask what I could give my family, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, what what can I offer them? You know, I'm going to love my wife every day. I'm going to love my daughter. I'm going to try to be be helpful with them along the way and then then i'm blessed yeah you know what i mean yeah. you guys have blessed me so much watching you guys out there in the mat and just the joy of just win lose or draw mm-hmm. you know i may i may you know you guys have more heck of a lot more character now you know yeah. oh for sure <clears throat> and look at the legacy i left josh is better coach than me easily i i really and there that he's following in the same footsteps but even better yeah, you know what I mean? true. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it, this a lot of people don't know this, but this guy is a wrestling machine, and you know yeah, it because you've right. been on the mat with him. And he doesn't brag about it a lot, but man, I just I'm in awe every time I watch him wrestle. It's like, oh my god, where did he come up with this stuff? Or how does he? How does he? I mean, on paper, I can I can describe what he did or yeah. whatever I know, but shoot, he he's like a he'll do like three or four moves in a row, and it's like, how did he do that? Or you know what I mean? It's like you know, I I think my wrestling was a little bit more grit, a little bit more just um, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yours, we have like, way different styles. Yeah, but your but at the same just, time, we know each other's styles. Like when we, we used to wrestle, we don't wrestle no more. <laughs> we would know what each other was gonna do. Yeah. But it sucked because we would both shoot at the same time and we both Flash. get black eyes. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> yeah. Every time we wrestle, I'd have a black eye, he'd have a black eye. Yeah. Or I would pop my finger out of place, he'd pop like we were just like in, <laughs> and so finally like we both got kinda hurt like one time. We both like banged up and we're like, 
dude, we can't do this no more. Like, <laughs> I, I have... Can we just, like, call a truce? You know, I know you're good. You know I'm good. Yeah. Let's just, like, leave it alone. Exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just... I don't know. Like, you've raised me in wrestling, and I, I found my own style later in life, you yeah. know? Yeah. I think I found, like, my confidence later in life. Yeah. Like, especially, like, even, like, doing... Like, that's why I still do the Greater Southwest. Is because, like, I just, like, I still miss him coaching me. So that's, yeah. like, a chance for him to be in my corner still. Yeah. And, like, he's my, he's, like, still, like, the alpha, you know? Yeah. And, so, and like. We, we had a bond, too. We, would like, I, th- I think you you wanted to impress me or yeah, please me. Yeah, that was really And at the same time, and I was so confident in you, I would be, like, watch this. Yeah. You know, I, t- I tell it. my assistant coach, watch this. If I tell him to do so, he's going to do it. And you would. He just had that. You, on on the on command. On the fly. Hey, hit that! Boom! You do it. I'll be like, man. See? Dude, <laughs> do you remember? When, do you remember whenever we were at uh, Denver Nationals? I think it was like my senior year, and we had like some. We had like the, the second ranked guy like in the bracket. Do you remember? This guy was like Jack. I swear, this kid had to have been like twenty. They must have signed a waiver or something. <laughs> this guy, me and me and my dad both knew it. I'm like, dude, this guy like, and my dad like just told me like straight confidence, like, dude. Just let it fly. Like, just let it fly. Like, do how you're going to beat this guy is not doing what he thinks you're going to do. It's like just doing the unpredictable. And I, what did I get him in? I got him some uh, weird that standing gator cradle, roll. Wasn't it? The, the splatel? Or what it was it? like a standing gut wrench or something like that. I don't know. I don't so it was like I had a front headlock, but I meat hooked him. Yeah. And I dove in between oh, his yeah. legs. Yeah. And got him like in a cheap tilt. <laughs> and I just dove so hard and I literally put him to his back like in one throw. And stuck him, dude. It was, awesome. it was sick, dude. We stuck him in like the first period. His dad was so he was freaking out, dude. His dad was freaking <laughs> hitting him upside of the head, and me and him were like, we didn't even Whoa. care. I and then even... I lost the next match. <laughs> I beat like the toughest guy in the bracket, and then I lost the next match to like who cares? That was, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that, that was match about. made it worth everything. That huh? was what it was about. Because we just let it fly. Yep. You, you gotta just let it fly sometimes, you, you know. Do, you do. Like this, whenever me and him went shooting, or when me and him went hunting this last oh, uh, last winter. Yeah, that was a great experience. We just let it fly, huh? I could never hunt because of wrestling. I was yeah. coaching all these years. He was doing the same thing. So finally, Josh Josh just took it upon himself. I said, Dad, we're going to hunt. I'm going to put in, and we're going to hunt. And my brothers are all great hunters. They're all, they've all chucked everything, deer, elk, whatever. I'm the only one that hasn't. Yeah, hasn't. You mm-hmm. know, not that I don't like being out there. I've been a few times, but I said, you know what? I, I need to take my son hunting. <laughs> so we went. That just shows and, and, uh, it's never too late. Yeah, it's yeah. never too like, late. We've never. been, we've tagged along and stuff, yeah. but like we just, why yeah. not? You know. Yeah, and Brandon yeah. was actually supposed to go with me the after. Yeah. Because you had to work the next day. Yeah. And Brandon was gonna take over, and yeah, we, we were gonna do it together. So like. Yeah. But I'm I'm kind of glad those no, me I and was, you in a way. I was happy too. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome. It was a special moment. Yeah. And I'm sure you know what it's like. You know, you and Ralph go hunting and yeah. stuff, and it's like you took Luke. Yeah, before, we took you? Luke. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I missed. He still That's talks sick. about that. Oh, it's all oh, good. You gotta let it fly. Right, so it's all all you good. let it fly. You know. <laughs> I lucked out, but like it was like one so, of those moments. So we were, tell them about the situation we were in, Josh. We were we had been hunting all morning long. Mm-hmm. I mean, we got up before dark. I mean, before light. Two uh, days, like mm-hmm. one full day, not even no campfire. We slept in a horse trailer, like literally like in the blanket rack. Like we didn't even really like, in, like you know how people go and they party and they're like yeah. me and him hunted from 4 a.m. to like 9 p.m. Like nonstop, huh? We had that Onyx uh, map tracker. Yeah. We would park the four wheel and we would just walk for like seven miles. Dang. You know, we would spread out. We were just, we would hear stuff here and there. We see antelope, we saw everything. And we, we heard gun, like we were at a hot spot, you know, like there was guys so let's let's tell like so tell like everyone like or like tell brandon about like how we kind of went like like against the grain yeah. from everyone else. really we did huh yes um, was, all the hunters were were in a certain area you know there's campers up everywhere. the ridges they were all yeah they're all on the high ground yeah and we did we hunted the high ground we saw oh remember we ran into a bull like a, oh my god me and josh were we, we climbed this 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 big old mountain and when we got to the top there's this big old bull giant old angus it was bull. like from me to like Hannah. and it was like looking at us and like you know just wanting to like <laughs> trash us it was a, like it was like probably to where if me and you would have took off running we it were would, close enough went. to where it could have got us yeah 
and me and my dad were literally just holding our gun like just walking like I'm like do not turn your back to it you know let's just and yeah. it, it just faced us off huh yeah and then finally it took off but that was like our first little encounter yeah. where we were like Whew, glad we got through that one <laughs> But that range, huh, I had everyone. Remember, there was just, like, hunters going up and down on the side-by-sides, just, like, all over each other, pile of traffic. Yeah, and, like, so we w- remember we had the map? We had the Onyx map? Yeah. So we could tell what land was public and what land wasn't. Yeah. And so, like, it probably was because of that map that we decided, like, yeah, there well, was you're fences. Studying, you were studying the fingers and stuff yeah. like that, and you were saying, you know, Dad, we should, we should hunt these fingers. That's what, you know, because I guess... He had done his research, and they had told him that's where you see the deer and this mm-hmm. and that. So I said, "Well, where do you want to go?" He goes, "Well, here's the main mountain. Let's go over there where those fingers are at, and let's let's go. You know, yeah, that's way far away from where everyone mm-hmm. was. We even went across a couple of gates and fences. We got stopped by ranchers that try to well, make yeah, us go. we went through some like fences that like we knew it was public land, but it was gated off like it <clears throat> like it was private. And we had like some ranchers pull up on us, and they're like, "Hey, how did you get through here? You know." We're like, we just went through that gate right there, and they gave us a hard time, and we're like, this isn't your private land. Look right here. We show them the Onyx map, and they're like, all right. Well, there ain't no deer over there. Yeah, there ain't no deer. Like, they're just trying to get us to go away. Yeah. They probably knew that there was, huh? Yeah. And so me and my dad, we went, and we, we uh, what was it, like the second day? Was it yeah. the thir- second day? Yeah. My friend had told <laughs> me about a big old hill over there, uh, Lawrence Armijo. Yeah. And he, we had went over there near there it was like way away from everyone's almost mm-hmm. to the freeway we we're yeah. like what's, this, what's out here nothing's out here i said you know what, let's just try it so we drove the four over like i don't know three or four miles yeah and then we walked like another three or four miles i mean we were just exhausted and then uh we uh we stopped and, I, and uh who who saw the that that water hole or what what happened oh no we saw one of those the, just a metal thing. yeah it was like a little metal yeah. thing with like some shade and me and my dad, like, we hadn't eaten nothing or whatever. And we had, like, a little, you know, peanut butter pack and some pretzels. And we're like, let's just sit here for a while, you know. Just got drink some water. And me and him just sat, you know, just sitting in the sun. Quiet for about, like, what, 30 minutes? And I think by us doing that, it kind of, like, didn't scare off, you know, any of the deer there. Because we sat. And we yeah. waited, so they probably came back. Yeah, and there to... was some water there, and it, <clears throat> nobody would have ever known there was a, a, a water hole there. Yeah. So the the water was 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 uh, like a little stream that it went down like through the fingers, like yeah. all those fingers yeah. are where water kind of goes. Yeah. So like we're even though we we're exhausted, and then it was all, it was getting warmer. I said, you know, the deer are probably bedded down. I said, you know what? I got a good feeling about that that little finger over there. I said, do you wanna? I this know you're like tired, but you spent, Brandon. Like yeah. we were like ready to go back and get and, you food. And, the, and in the hunt, I gave him choices. I, I wouldn't, you know, I didn't say, "Well, we're, this is what we're gonna do, son." I'd say, "What, what do you want to do? This is your hunt. Where, do you want to go?" And he says, "Why not? Why not?" <clears throat> kind of just went with it. So we so we <laughs> went down there, and here here we are going through the through that arroyo, and all of a sudden you're like, "Dad!" <laughs> I look up and there's a buck huge buck i mean you could see this guy's antlers from like we were about 200 yards yeah and he just came up like you, he was in the fingers but he came up like on the saddle of the hill yeah so he just climbed up because he obviously heard us walking and he just looked over he was just looking at us and i'm like dad there's a buck right there and like you we each have binoculars but we we couldn't tell if it was well I there, there was so it, much brush in the back yeah and i didn't want you to kill a dose so i said don't shoot till i know it's a buck so he had the gun yeah and I told him, get down, you know. So he got down in a good position, like a kneeling position. And I was like, shoot, shoot. And right when I, like, kind of said, gave him the green light to do it, that thing just went for... It took it, off running, It, like, dude. took off. And he took a shot. He let it off. And that's something we practiced for, too. We, we, we did. We had, uh, when we were sighting in the gun and stuff, we had talked about it. If they're going, shoot ahead of them, mm-hmm. and you'll, you'll hit them. And sure enough, that sucker just dropped. <laughs> Dude, and and I, I had the sunglasses. I mean, the, the binoculars. So all of a sudden, I, it disappeared on me. And you were like, I got it. And I was like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. <laughs> I said, are you sure? He goes, I'm positive. I'm positive. And I'm like, ah, this is too good to be true. There's <laughs> no way. True. I saw it. Cause I, so I, I hit it while it was running 200 yards. This is this luck. It has to be luck. Shot it right directly in the ear through the other ear. So we, headshot. We didn't even know where, the, where we couldn't even find the the bullet hole. The bullet hole. There was just, no bullet hole. There was just <laughs> blood coming through its ears. 
Like perfect intact, me, everything. It was just there. Dead on Alliance, dude. <laughs> that was cool. They call me, a... uh, what's that guy's name? Chris Kyle. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> that was awesome. He but, only, only he would have made that shot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're little. I mean, he had a little BB gun. He'd, he'd make the craziest shots with little birds and things. And I'd be like, oh, I would come yeah. back with like 12 birds, dude. I'm like, look at all these birds I shot. <laughs> I just love to hunt naturally like you. Like we always had it in us, but we just didn't really go yeah. that much. Or So like with my BB gun, that was like my only hunting, you know? So yeah. I, I was like a ditch bank hunter. I'd get muskrats and I'd get like <laughs> crows and all kinds of stuff, you know? Yeah. I would tie like a string to like my bow and arrow. And I'd go fishing on the ditch. Yeah. Like, I'd hit a fish and pull it out. Like, <laughs> all that stuff led to this, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. finally, like, when this happened, I wasn't, like, it was just, like, hitting a target. And that's probably got to be one of, like, the biggest, like, adrenaline rushes I ever hunt. It was. Like, it when was. we saw it there and we were just, like, <laughs> just me and you out there. Then no one else there. Like, it was just me and you. We did it. Yeah. yeah. You know, you hunted it with me. You gave me directions. We, we were happy, man. And we were and uh that was his last day to do it so like yeah. that was all god yeah you know he let us have that Definitely. moment together we gutted it we it, everything good you know and then we we're leaving those ranchers we ran into the ranchers again he said you guys see anything i said no he says uh <laughs> well, i told you there's nothing in there and we're like i guess not <laughs> <laughs> no, the deer was deer in the, the deer was in the horse trailer because we don't want to give away our spot yeah. or you know they yeah. probably knew but we just left it real subtle you know yeah, yeah. We saw a couple people who were like, yeah, you know, better look next time. <laughs> Big old 10-pointer in the back. <laughs> that was fun. That was, that was really good. Heck, yeah. But uh, I kind of wanted to touch, like, a little bit, like, on, like, you know, everyone knows, you know, you've overcame a lot in life. You've overcame, you know, just even from what you've talked about, just little little battles, you know, little hiccups that you've learned from, you've grown from. Um, and, uh, I, I think, you know, it, the people that know you the most know that, uh, about 10 years ago, you were in a really, really bad accident, you know, to the point where you had to get airlifted and, uh, you, you know, you were, uh, you were working on the tractor and you were pulling piping, right? And there oh, was yeah. a, there was a pipe that you, you didn't know that it was cemented. You were pulling all these pipes with the tractor with like, you know, the tractors with yeah. the big wheels and the little wheels. Yeah but that doesn't have no like protection. Yeah. It was like an old Ford. And so he was pulling pipes and he got to one that he didn't know was cemented and the tractor wheels kept turning. So it pulled it and it flipped back. So a giant tractor literally flipped back on top of you and crushed your body. Right. Right. And you were literally, weren't <clears throat> you like stuck underneath it and everything? Yeah. Or like at least it was a half an hour before anybody even got there. Dang. Yeah. So, imagine? I, no, I can't imagine that. <laughs> like it I'm was, claustrophobic as it is, but imagine like knowing your hip and everything is literally crushed with was, like thousand pound tractor on you. Yeah. And so who found you or what? So, <clears throat> it, like you said, I, I I went into kind of panic mode at first. I was like, oh my god, you know, and you you, you can't move, you can't. You're looking at the blood, you're looking at your bones sticking out. You're just like compound fractures what what the heck you know and and i started going into a, like a shock you know what i mean where i knew i was gonna pass out and i i was like i can't because I, I if i pass out i'm gonna die yeah. i need to fight through this yeah. whether it be cutting off my legs and crawling away or whatever i need to fight through this so um immediately the first thing the first thing that came to my mind is uh, jesus help me jesus please you know just whatever you can do help me and immediately, I it, not even whatever, my temperature went down. I was able to just, I mean, the pain was there, but whatever. You know what I mean? But it's that other stuff that gets you. The, yeah, like the, the wooziness. Yeah, it the, must like, have been white as a ghost. Yeah. I was sweating. I was, all of a sudden, I just, I just, my temperature went normal and I was able to function. So I said, okay, let's think here. How do I get out of here? So it, yelling didn't help. I was way out in the corner of my land. So <clears throat> I was like, okay, do I? Do I have a knife here? Should I cut off my, one of my legs and crawl away? Mm -hmm. What do I do? And uh, it dawned on me. I didn't even own a cell phone back then, but I had borrowed your mom's cell phone because I was going to sell some hay and I was expecting a phone call. Yeah. So I was uh, I was looking for a knife or something, and I was digging. And I was like, I, I, hey, I got the phone. 
And thank God I didn't cut off my leg. And then I see the oh, phone on the ground. I'd be like, oh. oh man. So, so I pulled the phone out and dialed 911. And, and so you were... So you were willing to like cut off your leg if you had to? You yeah, yeah. Like you were at that point where like I'm gonna if I have to I'm gonna do it. Exactly. Dang. And I would have done what it. What a what a freaking crazy situation. Yeah. But I didn't it didn't happen, you know, and I and yeah, I Yeah, but that thought was there. I called like, nine one one and they could not find me. There was ambulances going down the ditch bank, down the you know, down our road, you know, they they I couldn't I couldn't bring them into where I was at. So I just I every once in a while I'd yell out or whatever and finally there's a uh, my neighbor uh, my neighbor's son is uh, his name's David, and uh, David's uh, like a special yeah. needs yeah. kid or whatever. You know, he, he's he's always since he's been young, he's always been uh, uh, special. Whatever yeah. I don't know. And so I used to he used to help me at the house, and like you said, he'd come to visit me. I'd be like, Hey, come on, David, let's mm-hmm. do this or do that. And so he liked he liked that he liked doing that. So anyways, he comes and he. He he came from his house. He saw the tractor flipped over, and he's running around in circles, just going, just yelling and around like, you. Yes, and, uh, you know, freaking out. And I was like, David, David, calm down, come here. And I and I had to like bring him down to, I mean, calm him down. And I just told <laughs> Isn't him. Isn't that funny? He's calming down the person that. Yeah. You you think he'd be the one freaking out? No. So I. <laughs> <laughs> You're calming him down. <laughs> so I told him to go, knock on every door in this whole neighborhood and tell them what what you've seen here and, and don't stop if one person says okay i'll go don't even stop keep going within a half an hour i had the whole las chavez there the 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 even the the uh the news people were there the i mean everybody was there and uh well before they got there going back uh a friend of mine norman his dad libby and uh and his friend came and they lifted up the jack to get it off of me and the jack the like a the, car jack yeah and and the it was like a handyman jack if anybody's used a handyman jack you know how unreliable those stupid things are it dropped back on top of oh. me but it was a blessing because i could have hemorrhaged and died right there i mean if my blood flow would have went out too oh. fast so that was before the ambulance was there yeah so, so like you would have just yeah went into so shock? that that actually was a blessing and then when then the ambulance got there they they were able to shoot give me shots or whatever so that wouldn't happen and then uh, then he or maybe they did the ID. same thing again. No, they lifted it up again and then they were able to get with me the out. jack. Yeah, and then how uh, did they pull you by your arms? Nor uh, Norman pulled me out, I think, and I heard a big old pop, like I don't even yeah. know what it was. And uh, so, anyways, the helicopter came and picked me up and, and took me away. And I was uh, the people working on me were freaking out. They're like, "Oh, I don't know why. I don't know why he's still bleeding. I don't know why." They couldn't figure out some things, and it made me panic a little bit. Because when you see the people, so I was like, okay, panic, you know, like, oh, you're no. you're at death's door, and you're like, okay, God, uh, you know, you're 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 panicking, like, okay, please forgive me of my sins, let me get me right before I go to heaven. Yeah. Whatever. And it was just like God, just His Holy Spirit just came upon me and just, 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 just laid me back down and said, relax, you're already mine, you're mine. Don't don't, there's nothing you could do now, will make you think one way or another you're mine just just stay calm i got mm-hmm. this and if you make it or not you either go with me or you're, or you're right you're mine you belong to me no need to panic and i just felt like a, a, a you know you just sometimes wonder am i really saved mm-hmm. am i really does god i mean am i really going to heaven i at that moment i knew for sure that i was mm-hmm. that was a good feeling <laughs> so i was like and, and as a matter of fact when i when i kind of laid back down i was like well maybe i i wouldn't mind going <laughs> 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 i was like it felt pretty good and it might have been the, the the morphine but yeah whatever whatever that was but, the holy spirit dude but uh being in that hospital bed for two months did you know, pass out at all no no the, do the whole thing no. So you're just awake, just watching them do all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, this and is crazy. Yeah, but until, and then we got to the hospital, and the, and even there, when they were doing tests, they were doing, like, testing my bladder, my, just my gut, see what's, what so you didn't have no was. internal yeah. bleeding? Not, not really, no. Like, nothing major busted? No, it was they, all... they couldn't understand it, because my pelvis was like a, a, a jigsaw puzzle. How do you have that? That all that thing shattered and, and everything else without crushing uh, your bladder or your, you know, just ruining some kind of yeah. internal organ. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was 
all I could say is it was God. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he had his hand on me. Dang. And, uh... How long I, were you in the hospital for? It, I was in the hospital... I was in a hospital bed for two months. I was in the hospital for, I think, like three weeks or something like that. And I remember them telling me that I probably wouldn't... At best case scenario, I'll be able to walk with the with the prosthetic and a, uh, you know, like an aid, like a, you know, a crutch. or Like yeah. a pimp cane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I remember feeling sorry for myself. I got, like, selfish, like, oh, poor me, you know what I mean? I was like, uh... And uh, I remember even, like, getting emotional that night, whatever, and, and I prayed. And God showed me the next morning, <clears throat> I saw a guy that was brain dead. And his daughter was trying to throw him a balloon, and he was just like... I was like, you were sharing a room with him? No, I, uh, it wasn't, they, they took me downstairs to this physical therapist and they were just letting me watch or just to get me out of the room. And, uh, this was already about a week after into it. And I just looked at him and I was just like, you know what? I, I got to cut this out, man. I'm going to be grateful that I'm, at least I have my mind. I, you know, whatever I have to go through, you know, I, I'm not going to complain no more. I'm just going to work hard yeah. and, and. And whatever happens, happens. You know? To show up every day and meet yeah, God in the middle. Every, yeah, and every day I challenge myself. You, you know, every day I would try to do something that would progress, you know. And uh, But going back, going back to that bed, there was a... People say I'm crazy, but that was one of the best times in my whole life. That was one of the most happiest times in my whole life because I didn't have the flesh to worry about. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that field to go plow. I didn't have the all these things on my mind I didn't have uh, you know the temptations temptations I didn't have nothing of this world I, all I had was me and God and I'd read the Bible every day I, I wake up longing for his presence mm-hmm. you know hey God and I'd pray I'd be in pain he'd soothe me he'd comfort me and it's just like oh man <laughs> my yeah. kid you would come and pray for me Josh had man this kid I, I, it was a blessing. I'd see him. I get all happy. You know what I mean. All my kids. Hannah, she 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 used to work on me every day. Help me clean my thing. Luke, <laughs> poor Luke. I, he'd come spend the day with me, and he get all wheezy. You know, Dad, is it hot in here? He starts yeah. sweating, and I felt so bad. For <laughs> well, him. my, you do you remember he? My dad had like, uh, basically a like halo? bars. They call it a halo. So it was yeah. three bars holding his hip together. So he had three holes, open wounds. For like three months or two, a month, huh? No, it was two months. That I had Literally, that. like, so every day he had like open wounds and it would get like, you know, uh, pussy, whatever. And so you, you talk to him and you see his thing. So if you're not like used to that kind of stuff, you get like freaked out. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of, even me thinking about it, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, I've never but, heard of that before. But there was not, none of the cares of the world were here. Yeah. Yeah, just the, the things that made me happy were seeing my children, you, Hannah, Luke, and and mom, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just just you guys being there and just the simplest things, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So and I was I was I felt like that I didn't have all the 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 garbage that that I usually carry every day and it, when I pray, it was like I prayed with expectation because I was right with God. You know what I mean? I was mm-hmm. really right with him, you know, and there's just a good communication going there. Mm-hmm. Somebody needed prayer, I'd be like, "Come over here. Yeah. I'm going to pray for you." And then I'd, I'd, I'd follow up and say, hey, what happened? I want to know because I know some, I know, and that faith and that, that's cool. just having that's that, awesome. that, that, that direct line with, with God at that time was awesome. But Think about how many lives that you <clears throat> brought to God just by them going to visit you, you know, not knowing, you know, like just yeah. your friends yeah. that weren't yeah. really followers, mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're getting, and I just wanted to share getting, with them yeah. you know, when they came in, hey, dude, check out the scripture, you know what I mean? And, and sometimes I got to take myself back to that place. I got to yeah. humble myself. You know, you get all caught up with everything. You know, that was just a good, good time with the Lord. You know, yeah. And yeah. To this Who's day, to say you can't be like yeah, that now. Still, I need to to take that time when you get up in the morning to spend some time with God. You know, before your day starts. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Involve Him in everything you do, and and your day will go. You so think much you better. just see so much more clear, huh? Oh yeah, and you don't sweat the small stuff. You know what I mean? He's just he's his hands upon you. You know what I mean? That just but, that's like proof that like so so we challenged ourselves every day every day it was something physical therapy it was you know if and if I couldn't if that day I was too sick to do whatever I would do something like me and Hannah would get in the car and I drive no way you know what I mean I wasn't even meant to drive I'd, I'd get it with a <laughs> cane and I'd push on the gas and 
mom would get all mad. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be with me all happy, looking out the window. <laughs> how old but, was uh, Hannah, do you think? I don't know. What grade do you think she was? Four? What grade are you in? How old were you? She four? was like four. She was four years old? Yeah. Oh, my God. And she used to help me clean my wound. She wouldn't even... That time when I knew she was meant to be a nurse. Because mm -hmm. it didn't even bother her. She just wanted to see me get better. She was just like, you know, wanting to help, wanting to whatever, you know. So, anyways, just... A ton of miles, ton of physical therapy, bunch of prayer, bunch of everything else. A lot of people that, I mean, I, I really truly have a lot of good friends, mm -hmm. a lot of good family, my brothers, sisters, my mom and dad. I mean, I'm just, I was overwhelmed with how many people just, just helped me, you right. know what I mean, who were there for me, you know, every day, just, and it was like, I, 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 was, I was just overwhelmed with the, with the kindness, all the guys from work, they'd mm -hmm. come and visit me and talk to me and encourage me bring me stuff help me bring money to me you know just all the things that just brought me through it was just well you didn't have no surface level friends that's proof that you didn't you weren't surface level with all your friends <clears throat> you know yeah. like you weren't just like a hey what's up and walk off like everyone that knows you know knows that you open up to them and you get people to open up to you even if it's just some random guy at work that you're working you know for the day with yeah you find out who they really are and i've seen yeah. you do it even with my friends, you know, like I'll invite friends over. All of a sudden, this guy's having a heart-to-heart -heart with like some guy that I barely know. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's cool though, cause that guy knows who you are now. Yeah. Like yeah. you, like remember even when we had like Georges over yeah. the other night. Yeah. Shout out to Georges, yeah. our last guest. I like Georges. But like you didn't even know him, and we were like we we were diving deep. Like yeah. we were talking like about life and the meaning yeah. of life and yeah. who we are on the inside. Like yeah. But that's why people gravitate towards you. And I think they gravitate towards even us too because it's rubbed off a little bit on us as like we're not surface level people. We're not meant to be surface level people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're yeah. not meant to just like like impress each other with like physical things like, oh, look, I got a, a belt buckle, which is cool. But like you use this to like dig deeper on the surface, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you, you're – and you knew this before your accident. Like the physical stuff is like doesn't even matter. Yeah. You know? You want to, you want more like mental, physical connection or uh, spiritual connection. Oh yeah. You know, and that's what people, that's, that's what people are attracted to is spiritual enlightenment or just enlightenment in general. Yeah. You know, it's like we are being fed the TV comes, all day and it's like, yeah. you're not getting enlightenment from that. When it comes down to it, what, what means anything? You yeah. Know what I mean? Other than your relationship with God and your family and your friends, making memories, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What, what? what uh, so you have a nice house. So yeah, have, and yeah. God has given me some of those things, but th that's not who who I am. That, I mean, that's if, I, if they got, if they're gone tomorrow, oh well. Right. You know what I mean. The things that are important to me are my, you know, Luke, you and Hannah, mom. You know, my family, my friends, my just just being with people, sharing life with them. You know, what yeah. I mean? this guy comes over on Sunday with his girlfriend. It's just like it brings joy to me. You yeah, know I mean, I just I'll drop everything to hang out with these guys. Yeah, you know. So. Well, but like to kind of add on to like your story, like you said, the doctor said you couldn't walk again. Mm -hmm. But like, you're like for those of you guys that don't know, like my dad runs every day now. Like my dad's probably in better shape than me. I always tell everyone at work, <laughs> they're like, "How's your dad doing?" I'm like, "He's probably in better shape than me," because you you not only surpassed like what the doctors told you but you even got in better shape than you were before probably the accident yeah like you overachieved. yeah and like through christ of course mm -hmm. but i mean that's really it you know i i could say anyone could say oh it's a miracle or oh but like that was god wanting you to have your own testimony right you know like i was listening to a sermon the other day and it said that God is actively seeking hearts that are willing to give him glory and, and help them out and give them strength and help prop them up to be strong men and women. Yeah. And he saw you seeking out and he's like, you know what? I see Brian. I'm going to give life, life to him. He's right there. He's right there. And uh, we, we, we try to find satisfaction and contentment and other things, but it's all in him. Yeah. And and then he blesses you with with all the... The, the the goodness you know what I mean the, yeah. of life and, and people and stuff like that but you know it all comes from your relationship starts with him you know for sure and then it trickles down you know I'm blessed I'm very blessed I am um, 
Well, you've taught us a lot. I mean, Brandon included. I mean, you've been with us long enough. You're, yeah. You, he's ba- my dad's basically like your uncle, and yeah. You know, you you were Luke's age growing up, and but you were always you know around all of us. We were all kind of like family and stuff, and even even Ralph, he's helped me out so much too. You know, yeah. your yeah. your dad has like every time I'm with him, I'm like just like my dad like we're, we're talking more like deeper you know how yeah. are you doing you know how are you really doing you know how's yeah. your how's things other than work you know you doing all right like, yeah. those are the type of things that not a lot of people have now no yeah no mm-hmm. it's hard to find people that uh that really care yeah you yes. know about how you're doing like exactly. how i really care about you i want yeah. the best for you yeah when i talk to ralph i know that he wants the best for me so yeah. anything he tells me is going to benefit me even if it's not what i want to hear yeah, yeah i was yeah. like ta- like like even with you like sometimes we're hanging out and you'll tell me something i'm like dang i didn't want to hear that but <laughs> I, I had to you know <laughs> yeah, I to <laughs> and i need it too you know what i mean yeah i mean my own kids will, will, will bring light on to me you know yep. luke, luke has straightened me out so many times you know and i look at it and i, and I have to humble myself and pray and yeah and you know there's a lot of you know we're we're all, we're all a work in progress you know yep. but uh, I just like that one thing that I know I did right with my family was I taught my kids to care about people and good my wife she installed that too because my most is probably twice as good as me mm-hmm. which she, they really sincerely care about people you know they when they ask somebody hey how are you doing they really mean it mm-hmm. or if they see somebody in need or whatever they they they'll take the time to go check them out they won't just walk straight past them you know what I mean yeah so that's one good if I did anything right, I think I installed that in them. You know what For I mean? sure. You and mom make a good team. You guys are both really yeah. compliment each other. Don't you think, Brandon? Oh, yeah. That's like, <clears throat> you see, like, even, like, any relationship, that's the pinnacle of who you want to be. Mm-hmm. Godly. They put God first in the relationship, and you just role models mm-hmm. at that point, yeah. I think she's, she's like the like the best person ever, and I just happen to like reap the benefits. Like, <laughs> oh, oh that that couple there is good, and she's like the best. No, and she her her Dad, heart, no. her yeah. heart is just. I mean, she's she's really a. How would you say like? Um, she just sets a standard when it comes to like, you know, really doing doing things right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the right thing to do. She has a a, a compass, an internal compass. The lead, she when I have a question that's whatever I really trust her compass her her opinion means a lot to me mm-hmm. you know what do we do here honey what do you think she are she right away knows before I'm even done with the sentence and I think I know too but mm-hmm. she's like you know do this you know yeah, that, like, that's uh-huh. right of course you're supposed to give to them of course why not you know what I mean or, or you know I'm like mm, okay <laughs> she, she's really the my better half you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. she, she just really has a good moral compass you know she, she really just, like is a motivator like, yeah she won't and let she, you settle for less. she won't she won't even in my life she'd be like I, I don't know how many times I wanted to settle for like even my job I was holding out for this job she she wouldn't let me take another one. Do you, that's what you want. You need to keep, continue to, to seek that. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys in school, you know, your college, she make you, you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. all the kids, even her students, she just, she really make lets them strive to be all they could be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't let them settle. They don't settle. And sometimes that's a, a drag sometimes, but when, it, when when it's over with, she makes me a better man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She does. Yeah, so. yeah, she'll hit you with the blunt truth. Yeah. And you know, that like really, and you're like, oh man. Oh yeah. yeah. But it's like you know, it's like ripping a bandaid off, but like in a good way. But what's like cool. she'll she'll hit you with it, and then you you just like complain a little bit, and then you'll do it, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you'll like end up doing it's yeah. exactly what she said, yeah. and you're like, all right, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> That's how it is with me and Kiana. Exactly. She'll tell me something, and I'm like, really? Like, like why not? Like you just said, why not? Or do you know you know you have to do that. And then I'll do it, and it'll end up being, like, turning out ten times better. I'm like, all right, I guess you're right. Exactly. <laughs> she's slowly gaining my trust. Yeah. She's, I like her. She's, I like she's her a lot. Good, she's a good girl. She's real cool. Yeah. yeah. She's She was, like, she was a friend before a relationship, which is yeah. cool, you know? Yeah. Like, we were, like, really close friends before, so. Yeah. You know, like Brandon it. introduced us, remember? Yeah. We, were, we went to... I had to convince this guy to make a move. Yeah. <laughs> I bonded with her she's right, right off the bat. Yeah, she's she's intimidating because she's you know young, yeah. independent, you know everything. She checks all the boxes, and you're like, uh, oh, I don't know, I'm like, it's out of my league or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, ask Josh. will be here on the couch. I was like, 
So did he sneak up? <laughs> Brandon would tell me, I'm not kidding you, he told me like consecutively for like two months. <laughs> He's like, Josh, like, I think she liked I'm like, dude, she doesn't. Like, no, he was like, dude. And she didn't. I don't think she did. Yeah, she <laughs> but did. She, would pre- she was a cool friend and stuff. Yeah. And like, but I, that's what I like about her. She wasn't like shallow, you know? Yeah. Like, she didn't like just anyone that like would give her attention. Yeah. It was like more than that, which was kind of, which is cool. Cause oh, yeah. Well, I, it, it's, it, it's neat when you have a challenge, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, mom was the challenge for mm-hmm. me. You know, girls, you know. I could have pursued anybody that it would have exactly been easier to to get or whatever. But she was the one that was like that wild horse that's out there. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, I want, I want that that one, man. That's a, if I could get that one. And the pursuit, you know what I mean? Yep. It just it took me some years to get to get, <laughs> <laughs> to get your mom. That's cool, man. But, That's awesome. But it was worth it. It was worth it. Yep. It really you never was. gave up. Yep. I never gave up. I'm glad, I'm glad I did. And you still haven't given up. You guys are still, yep. you know, pursuing each other. Yeah. Even through marriage. Heck yeah. yeah, man. It's been great. It's been a good ride. <laughs> She's, she, we really compliment each other. or She compliments me big time. So... <laughs> To change the subject, because I know you're a big fan of UFC. Oh, yeah. you see the clip. We got a lot of big fights coming up. And I just want to know. I kind of want to just fill you out. So let's just start with like the eggs and potatoes. We got Khabib versus Justin Gaethje. I got to be honest. I, I'm i I'm really hoping that Justin pulls it off somehow. That, <laughs> that would be his kryptonite yeah. or whatever. That Just his toughness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, but I don't know. Khabib is still in the, in the zone right now. He's right. still in his prime. I haven't seen him. He's still improving. So I don't yeah. know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Who do you gonna, think, it's Brandon? Be hard to beat. I got Gaethje. You got Gaethje. I do because I think he, I know he lost to Poirier, but like how he said, he's like I just went out and just put on a show. Mm-hmm. And with this, when he fought Tony, he was more calculated. The strikes. Right. He didn't. His gas tank looked phenomenal. And then what I'm thinking is, he we haven't seen him wrestle, and he's like, he's a D1 wrestler, so we can't forget that either. Yeah. But also, Khabib's a monster. Mm-hmm. So it's not well, Khabib like a, just lost his dad too. That might have something to play in it. Yeah. That's like, right. as if I lost you and I had a fight in a month, like I would. You can't say that that doesn't affect you. Yeah. yeah. You look at Rocky two, oh, yeah. Rocky three. Yep. He Mr. Had that, T. They had the, the you, trainer. You, you huh? lose a little part What's of his of name you? again. The, the, I forget. Mickey or Mickey, something. yeah. Was Mickey. He had Mickey. Go man. get him, Rock! <laughs> <laughs> Go out there and shake some. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta win, Rock. <laughs> he tells him. It always helps to have that person. Yeah. You know. That was his, and that was his Mickey, yeah, dude. Yeah, his dad yeah. was like. When you have somebody behind you, it really helps, man. You know, you, you, you know, it builds your yeah. confidence. Yeah. You, know? you have that team. That, that compass. It, it works for you, you know. I mean, I know when I've, I've been on a horse, like just a couple of weeks ago, I had a horse breaking two on me, and mm-hmm. he was, he was, I was getting ready to bail. I was just, and I could hear my brother Joe, you know, in the background, yeah. hang in there, brother, hang in there, hang in there, and I could hear him, and it gave me a little more strength to finally, to where the horse finally stopped, and I was like, I know I would I would have bailed if I was by myself, because yeah. I wouldn't have given it half the ride, yeah. but I could hear him in the background, just get yeah, a little voice, just gave me a little more strength, oh, you know, man. that's cool. That's cool. Or, you know. I guess really just Gaethje and Khabib uh, is really so, one so of the main. So, what's that, that league where, where the, the, the beginner guys, uh, they have fights and they have tournaments? Ultimate like Fighter. That. Is it the Ultimate Fighter? Yeah. So, a friend of mine was telling me, he says, you know what, if, if it was any time to get that, that, uh that app or whatever. UFC pass? Fight yes. pass? He goes, it's now. He goes, there's two brothers in there that are wrestlers and they have been what, killing everybody. And they have a... Uh, gosh, I can't think of Are they Arabic? I don't think so. I, he he said, well, one of them, nobody's made it past the first round with him. And he and, they, and he's already fought the best of them. And they, they've already uh, given him a, 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 a contract. Dang. Yeah, and and just and before it's even yeah, ended? and I always like to try to you know get these guys you know, right at the yeah beginning. you try to call one before they get famous. He or was whatever. the first guy to to like discover uh, Daniel Cormier. Remember? Oh yeah, I said that guy's gonna be it. I will I never forget. It. He's like, dude, there's this guy Daniel Cormier. Dude. <laughs> He's an Olympic wrestler. He's mopping the floor with everyone. This was before like Daniel Cormier was Daniel yeah. Cormier. He was a heavyweight, you know, and he's just plowing through everyone. 
that guy, remember that guy, Big Country? Yep. Remember Big Country? Yeah. The big stomach? That, at the time, that guy was deadly. And oh, yeah. Daniel Cormier freaking <laughs> uppercutted him like. Him, Cejudo. Slamming everyone. Cejudo followed, we followed Cejudo, Cejudo too. When he was in Legacy or whatever it was. I don't know what. what, what uh, yeah. It, uh, those, we, those I, that's the fu- it's the funnest thing about being a fight fan is following someone through their journey. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I remember, and I know you hated him at the time, but I remember when Conor McGregor first started. Yeah. And it's it's so funny to see people's perceptions change because at the time, no, I don't like everyone's like, oh, I hate that cocky guy. He's stupid. And I know you still think that about him. <laughs> I don't think he's stupid. Well, I, whatever. I respect him. I, I'm just like not a fan of him. Right. Like I don't root for him. Yeah, you know? he's not like your style. I mean, I'm type like of person. God, I, I'm entertained with him. You yeah, know? I mean, he's very entertaining. <laughs> I think he's the guys like him make it cool. Yeah, you know? yeah. they make it fun. Well, you know? it like took everyone like kicking him, punching him, going all the way up for him to finally make it, and then everyone's like, "Oh, I guess he was right." Yeah, yeah. You know, that guy. You got to give it to him, man. It, really think good. about how hard it is. Like what I like about him is like how hard it is to call your shot with confidence and and execute yeah that's like like babe ruth those amazing moments where he just point to the outfield and just crank it yeah like that's even better than him just hitting a home run okay so like for i someone to say i'm gonna do it and then do it so i got one for you uh style bender what's his name oh, oh yeah. israel adesanya yeah who's he fighting Host, paul uh, paul costa paul costa, costa. i think costa i got wins. costa i, I, I don't know too. I'm i just think he's too one. much too much Guy, too much, you know. For he reminds for, me of like Josh Krause. Because even though that like guy's supposed like a to be freak of nature, yeah. giant, like, yeah. what uh, are you gonna do? I don't. I don't. You're gonna crump on him. <laughs> Israel's just gonna. Oh. <laughs> He's think, gonna like do the Matrix, go back, and then just Israel. I don't wow. know. He's he, been bugging me lately, though. The only thing I is, love Israel is what? when uh, Paulo Co- Costa fought. Um, Romuel, oh. they stood toe to toe, and that he took a punch good, from Romuel. That was good, like a clean. If you ever get a chance to watch that fight, I saw it. Rome. Oh, you did? Yeah, I saw it. So I'm saying his chin is. He he could he could, he could get in the it. trenches, huh? Yeah, yeah, he could he could get in there. And and and, and if you want to start a dog hey, fight, but what, he's hey, down. but what about yeah, he's down? What about Adesanya versus uh, that one guy, that Mexican guy, Burn? Uh, he already fought him. Um. Which the one? Spanish guy, the kind of fat guy. They already so, fought. He knocked. Yeah, I know. Gastelum. Gastelum. Yeah, what about are, that? You can't yeah. say that Israel isn't comfortable being in the trenches because well, he dug deep yeah. in that fight. But yeah. he didn't go deep with the, with the. But he didn't want to stand toe to toe with Romero. But yeah, Romero also but, didn't want to do. That. I don't know. Yeah, that was kind of a weak. Yo, well, should have. I uh, yeah. I don't even want to talk about that fight. I, there's so much about that fight. I just about, think like, that Costa's going to just yeah. drag him I into think deep so. waters, man. That he, He's just going to, I don't know. Did you know Khabib, they asked him, like, you know, they do fight predictions and stuff. They're like, how are you going to beat him? What technique? What are you going to do? And he's like, he's like, I'm going to take him to the deepest waters he's ever been in and drown him. But did you hear what Gaethje <laughs> did? Did you hear what Gaethje <laughs> said? That's scary. What did Gaethje say? Gaethje like, had a reply to him. What did, what did he, he say? say? He said, if, he's like, he's like, you could do that, but he's like, you might be drowned or something. <laughs> but then he said something, he's like, I'm going to go out on my shield. He's like, I'm not going to tap, like, Connor or yeah. anything. He's like, he's like, we'll see who lasts. That reminds me of, like, the Russian on Rocky where he's like, if he dies, he dies. And you're just like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, like, just those one-liners yeah. that you're like, yeah. this guy might kill me. What about, uh, like, Tony? Tony Ferguson? Who is he fighting? Poirier. Oh wow! That's on the same card as That'd the Khabib fight. I think Poirier might That'd beat him be in really, boxing. Really, really entertaining. I don't think he'll box. He uh, he should learn his lesson. I gotta from be last fight. I gotta be honest with you guys. I've been watching like vintage uh, boxing lately, mm-hmm. like all the greats. You know what I mean? I've been watching uh, uh, not even the not even the guys that are watched it. What's his name? Um, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. No, no, yeah, Oscar De La Hoya. Um, what's the uh, the Filipino guy? Oh, Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Oh, my gosh. That guy. <laughs> He's unbelievable. I've been watching all his old fights. That guy fought everybody who was anybody. Yeah. I mean, the best. And even to now, you know. And he, he actually fought them. Yeah. You know. Oh, man. He he, he, he squared up with those that guys. That guy holds nothing. What about the Mexican guy? What's his name? 
who uh, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh yeah, no the new Roberto. The, Durant, oh Canelo. Or, yeah, what about Canelo? Oh, Canelo. What do you think of him? Oh, that guy's legit. Man. Dude, I saw a highlight of him. It was like a clip of him on YouTube, uh, Instagram, and he literally like dodged oh, this punch, yeah, yeah. and he watches it go by, and he looks at the guy and he just like laughs, <laughs> like he just like straight up like this guy just threw everything he had and he just went. I love it when they just like let him drop. Him they just watch him drop. You know what I mean? Like they're so sure that they hit him. They're just like. Yeah, you know, me. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, I gotta jump on him. Yeah, I gotta get on top. <laughs> but they just watch him just fall. It's like, dang. That's what I like about like Gaethje is like he just he'll just throw, you know. Yeah, he's a fighter. That's why I like him and Ferguson a lot because yeah. they're never not like in the trenches. And they have that mental. They're never running. They're never. Yeah. They're always like in your face. Yeah. You know, like doing weird stuff. Yeah. Tony Ferguson's with his little voodoo <laughs> stuff. And they have that mental fortitude, like to keep like Ferguson, I was like, they need to stop this dude. Yeah. Like and something's not right in his and head. He just keeps going at him. Like, I bet you gay too I was like, dude. <laughs> he's missing something, man. Yeah. Something's, <laughs> something's just disconnected in his brain. Because when he kept going after that, I was like he kept like just walking after getting hit, like with everything. See that's what I wouldn't like I love like fighting and wrestling yeah. and like, but like if I got hit enough times in the face, I'm just be like, I'm good, dude. Just take it. I got my paycheck. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Cause that's like I don't know, man. It sucks getting hit in the face. You guys all know we've yeah. all been in fights. When oh, someone yeah. like just pops you square, your nose like just yeah. has this feeling, almost like it's running, and your your eyes water, and you're like, this sucks. That's right, right from the get go. Yeah, right happens, from the get go. Like, <laughs> Dude, I'll never forget this one guy. Uh, well, you guys all know Mylan, right? Yeah. Mylan is like my best friend at the time, like in high school. He's still like one of my best friends. He lives uh, in North Carolina now. But it was like my senior year, and like we used to always go to the pool, the night swims. Yeah. Like in high school, they would have like a Friday night swim. So like at midnight, yeah, they open yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So everyone like, you know, it's yeah. like a small town. Everyone loves to go. And Mylan was dating this girl. Uh, I was going to drop her name, Jordan Monk. Yeah. Uh, so Mylan was no, I don't even know if he was dating her he was just talking to her hanging out she was gonna go with us so you know how high school kids like hang out at Sonic and then they go somewhere so me and her were, were sitting on the bed of my truck waiting for Mylan to show up so we were sitting on the bed of my truck uh, drinking like Sonic and she was like telling me she was like kind of like crying or something she's like my ex-boyfriend like he was just here like two minutes ago when he pulled my hair she's like he said he said that like you better not be talking to anyone else or like he's like like did some aggressive stuff and i was like oh i was like sitting and i was like i was like if that guy came here right now i was like oh i'd punch him in the face for you i was like that pisses me off and as soon as those words he left my up. mouth this guy drove up right next to us and i didn't even know who he was or what he was an older guy he was like 21 yeah or 23 i don't know i was only like 17 and he shows up and he gets out of the car and like so he's approaching us here's her and here's me he grabs her by the hair and like throws her aside like off the bed of the truck and he just takes a wild swing at my face dude like no words exchanged just just walk boom and he just throws everything he has and thank god i don't know like out of the corner of my eye i saw it coming and i just ducked it enough to where it just went over my head like barely if it would have connected out of and out like he threw his whole body and so you know us, <laughs> like once we get that duck under, we're we're good to go. So I did it, and I had my head under his armpit, and I just picked him up like a, the high crotch, and I just freaking slammed him on his head, dude, in the concrete, <laughs> hard. Like it was just instinct, like wrestling. You know how you you practice something so much you don't think about it. It was just like a move. I just went boom, and like right off the bat, you know how like when your adrenaline gets going, and he tries like. To like run away from me and I'm like get back here you're not running from me like this is not I shouldn't have done this and like I went and chased him down and I freaking <laughs> suplexed him again dude. dude and then I was just on top of him like because I just saw him do that to her and it was just like everything was just yeah and then all of a sudden the cops get me and the cops have me handcuffed because the cop was there at Sonic and they were like pulled me off and they were gonna like arrest me and then there was enough people there they're like Witnesses. no it was self-defense yeah they're like, this guy went straight up to him and tried to hit him, and he was just... So they ended up arresting him, and they, like, let me off the hook. <laughs> and then, like, later, they called me to the cop car, and they're like, hey, this guy has something to say to you, you know, whatever. And he's like, he's like, hey, bro, he's like, 
my bad. I didn't know you were a good fighter. <laughs> he's like, <"That's> so <laughs> he's like, are we cool now? I'm like, we're cool, bro. Yeah. But like crazy stuff like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Going back to that. How come people, more, more guys, when they're in the clinch and all that, how come they don't just do that high crotch? I don't know. You could lift somebody. I mean, Cormier kind of does it with a single leg and just drops the guys like that. But like to, to hit that inside and just, just do that, that lift on the, uh, on the inside, why don't they do that? They can't choke you. They cannot. Uh, because why don't your they head do is that? up next to your hip. So they can't get an arm under. You know what I mean? When you have them in the air with a high crotch, I'm like, you're why your don't leg. they do this? So many times they're up against the fence, whatever. I'm like, if that guy would just, just, just kind of fake it right there and go mm-hmm. the other direction and just take him down, that, that thing would be. But, anyways, I, no, that I, just I tried to. I was, I've been uh, doing jujitsu and I mm-hmm. tried a fireman's dude. I hit it. To, I, I didn't dump it. You're supposed to dump in yeah. jujitsu instead of throw it. And I yeah. tried to throw it, dude. It got crucifix. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. They're like, yeah. So they like scissors both your arms and you're like. And, and maybe you, there yeah. is something they could do in that that, that yeah, I'm not seeing or something. You know well, I because mean? I, I was just like, I saw it open. I yeah. tried to sweep single, step back, and I had the arm still. So I was like, you know, I'm going to slide in, try to throw it. No. <laughs> dude, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a fan of that fireman's. Lady, I love it. Too. I, like, I cannot dude, I believe it because like I, when I was in school, I was like, this thing don't work. It's mm-hmm. just like it works when you drill. This yeah. isn't a, a move you could actually use. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dylan Bar, Dylan uh, uh, Gonzalez proved proved me wrong on that one, man. We've that seen guy, that guy. Gosh, fucking, that guy could hit that, that thing. He, at any moment. Down by yeah. five points, he'll find a way to hit that fireman. And like what Philip does is he double drop steps. So he'll get the fireman, take one drop step, the guy sprawls, and then switch arms and get it on the other side. Ooh, that's so the cool. guy is just like stepping back, and he's like a sniper, Gosh, dude. I wish I would have I would have gotten that when I was younger <laughs> age. That would Me too. Good. That's a good move. Man. I didn't hit it that much growing up. Yeah. I did the high crotch. I just finally learned that. Like, oh, remember okay. when we learned yeah. to just pop the hips? Yeah. We're in Las Cruces. I used to tell you, take them up in the air. You were like, these guys are too strong, Dad. I said. They can't do nothing when they're in the air. They're, everything they can't sprawl. They can't. What are they gonna do? They're in the air. That tournament, you were like taking guys. That's when up. it just snapped, huh? You were taking. Do you remember guys, whenever I? Do you remember like? Yeah, there's like key matches that I remember, like in high school and having you around and stuff. And do you remember whenever uh, West Mesa recruited like that three time state champ oh, from, yeah. from California? Heck yeah, that was the, that was probably. That had to have been the best match I ever saw. I think that was the you. most sickest that one match was, was up there in the with top him, five. like there, like he, we, oh my gosh! They, they and it was senior night, so they announced this guy, and I was like, oh my god, what are the odds of Josh? And his weight was already stacked like crazy, you know. That's big right. channel. Everyone just clinged to that weight class, mm-hmm. but this guy was like the cream of the crop, or whatever, man. And I, he wrestled really good that match man I mean they were going back and forth I think you even got the first takedown huh I threw him and it went end. into it went into <laughs> overtime and it was like next person no it wasn't next person win, score win I think it was like the I forget what it was but anyways you pinned him you got him you actually he shot in on you you did something to him I don't know if you neck, neck crank or whatever neck crank and you pinned him and it was just like <laughs> we were going crazy. You know, like that movie Vision Quest, like when yeah. he wins that duel. Yeah, it was like that. Like it wasn't the state championship, but it might as well have been. Yeah, because they hyped this guy up so much. They were just even my own coach is like, you know, dude, like just like already like talking to me like as if I lost, and me and him knew like in our head. You know, you have those yeah. moments where it's like I'm not listening to no one. Yeah, like I know I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna do whatever I can. Just tunnel vision. And I pulled it off, dude. And I just remember, like, looking in the crowd. I think I, like, blew a kiss all stupid. <laughs> man, I wish we could find footage on that one. Side. I know, man. We have so much man. lost uh, wrestling matches. Yeah. No one will ever know about. That was awesome. That was really <laughs> awesome. We need yeah. to we need to get back in the wrestling room after all this corona stuff. No, not get... me. <laughs> Come on. I'm retired, man. That's Will it. you coach us again for Greater Southwest? Heck yeah. We should do it again, yeah. Brendan. I'll okay. coach you. We'll just show up. <laughs> I'll rest you guys in the wrestling room, but I ain't going to go to no tournament. Heck no. Remember Unless... you coached you for the Greater Southwest? <laughs> this we is were like trashing people. Dude, huh? we were throwing everyone around. <laughs> I had just had surgery two weeks I know, before. I remember. Dude. You're like, <laughs> we like, were fine. worried about him getting hurt, and he had that college guy from um, Highlands. The guy in the second period, the guy was all hurt. <laughs> I was like, "Why is he hurt?" That we was had, fun, huh? That was fun. Remember that guy from Colorado? Which one? Oh, when yeah. When he threw a head and arm on, 
this Dude. guy's always telling his his, his wrestlers, Never head and arm. do not do that stupid head and arm. It's the dumbest move ever. It's gonna. I don't know why you go for that headlock. It's just, it's <laughs> you're gonna get stuck. First thing he does, all his kids are watching him. All the little kids are around. It's like the first match of the tournament. I get this beast from Colorado. I'm like freaking out. First thing he does. You know how you coach all yeah. these kids, and they're like, you know, they think you're God, and then it's like, okay, well, let's see, you know. So like, I've never seen so many people in my corner, and I was just like, oh god. And dude, the he-, he shot in on me, and what happened? Like the head and arm was just there. I just I don't even know, it, but I know that the time was running out, and I was like, you better pin him now because he's gonna come back to beat you. <laughs> I know he's gonna beat you. <laughs> <laughs> you better pin him. <laughs> and he pinned him. He's probably right, dude. This kid probably would have got me. He was like their coach for, yeah. for like that uh, all-star team or something. Yeah. He's like, he was pretty tough. Yeah. Tough he, dude. Poor guy. He came to New Mexico probably thinking he was going to spank us, huh? We got those, and then we got those 505 guys. They're all trying to start fights with him. And everything. Really? We were just having fun, dude. We were having fun. Dude, when we go to the freaking tournaments, we throw down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone has a target on us. That's one thing, you know, that you even started is, like, that tradition of, like, that winning mentality in Belen. Yeah. Like, that dog fight. You know, everyone from Belen, they, everyone from Albuquerque knows Belen is, like, those guys are a bunch of dog fighters, you know? Those guys, they wrestle dirty or they... And it's not even wrestling dirty. It's just gritting, you know? Like, in your face. I'm gonna... It's domination. Yeah. It's, like, totally, like, not letting you, like, Khabib even said, like, drowning you. Like, I'm not going to let you even think that you have a chance. I'm going to get five moves to where you finally just give up. Yeah. You know, and tell my kids, like, just oh, you, smother them. You look in the, <clears throat> at the deer, when deer fight, you know, the one that comes with more, you know what I mean? They, they, it's a mental game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you establish yourself as the alpha dog. You in the first the wolf, second. You got the wolf yeah. pack. I mean, immediately that dog comes at you and puts a hurt on you and you're just like, whoa, wait a minute here. Mm-hmm. Puts a little doubt in your mind, a little. Yeah. You know, that's well, I I tell these guys. it throws you off. Huh? That's I tell them. Even if you don't get a move, just just put some kind of little bit of hurt on them. You know what I mean? Yep. Bump heads or you know, get a little rough, and then yeah. and then you know, you start breaking mm-hmm. them down mentally, and then yeah, dude, it's so much mental, don't you think? Oh yeah, like it's that's one of the sports where it's like you. Re- I've seen guys fall apart mentally just by that, just by that like uh, continuous pressure on someone. Yeah, some like kids can't handle it. Mm-mm. You know, they don't they, like it. They're not used to being dragged down there, you know. They've Especially never been challenged. You, you take them down, let them up, take them down, let them up. And then after a while, they're getting frustrated and they're just getting like, hey, that's not even fair. They're not mm-hmm. even, just, not like, even yeah. fair. Maybe you made them look bad, but you know what? You, it was the only way you could be done mm-hmm. sometimes, you know. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. Yep. Heck yeah. yeah. I do the best when I'm like smiling. Get the dub. Like happy almost. Like you're just yeah. in the zone. Like, come on, baby. Let's you go. Do. Like I'm never like, I don't do the best when I'm like aggressive. Like, in, like, I want to hurt you. I'm just, like, come on, like, playing a game. Like, I'm like yeah. a dog, you know? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? You got rhythm. You yeah, get, you, rhythm. You get rhythm. You establish you that rhythm. You rhythm, and you're just, like... That flow. Oh, man. You get in the zone. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in the zone. Anything they have to give you, you're, you're going to fly around them. You're going <laughs> to, like, be the Matrix, you know? Yeah. Just, without feels. even thinking about, <laughs> thinking about it. Without even thinking about it. Like, when I play football, like... Everything like slow down, like when you see the ball, like oh, it's like man. slow motion. Mm-hmm. Like, oh. You had some great hands. <laughs> you know, I was like, what the this heck? guy, man, he, he impressed the heck out of me. Yeah, man. I saw little you out there. Year. Man, <laughs> he'd make some good catches, bro. That's one thing. I never had, had good hands, dude. I think my eyes messed up or something. I, I never had good hands. Before. Me and him playing catch growing up. Freaking ball noise him. <laughs> yeah. Every other throw, just ball. So I'm getting LASIK. On the 11th. Oh, nice. So watch, I'll watch. Maybe I'll be a, maybe I'll be able to play ball with Josh. <laughs> His girlfriend throws the ball to me, and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we all. That was like one thing that like that's my senior year. I worked so hard on that one. It brought me back. I was like, summer. I did everything I could. Just you know. Mm-hmm. But this for you taught me. I remember there was a wrestling match in middle school. I think it was in Moriarty. I was down. I was like already getting. I was like already getting pissed because. The guy was like stalling. I couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And I was on. I remember he's like, "Oh my god!" Oh, because I was <laughs> he like, "Told I, you to go down." Yeah, because I was like this, and he's all. <laughs> I was all, "Oh!" <laughs> and he's all, "Peterson, Peterson!" And he's like, "Remember what we did to practice?" And uh, I don't know. I was like, I see time running down, and I just hit it. Boom! And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> thank God, it's over." <laughs> did you time expired. Did you win? And I won points. Damn. He was beating me by one point, and I just. 
He's all, remember the Peterson, hold the arm, <laughs> hook the leg after. <laughs> so make sure you hold it. He's my captain. I, I made him captain. Heck yeah. Yep. But I was like, you can one. count on this guy. Yeah. Brandon is one guy you can count on. Yeah. You yeah. throw that ball, that quarterback knew. If I dart this down the field, he's gonna get it. If there's one guy on the field, Brandon will freaking he make would. it happen, dude. He would, man. I, was... I remember just watching you, and I'm looking at the ball like, there's no way. It would be like way over him. Brandon would be right here. All of a sudden, he would just freaking <laughs> catch it and pull it in. I'm looking at him like, what the heck? What's, what's up with this kid, dude? Your yep. hands were just sticky. I you put know? glue on him, my gloves. No, no, you like the kid on the uh, little giants. Like Brandon's running down the field like that. <laughs> I'll be honest. So I never wore gloves. Like, I didn't wear gloves during practice. I never did. Only did the games. And I was like, it's because my hands got cold. <laughs> I was like, that's the only time I would wear gloves, I told myself. Because everyone, like, practice, like, oh, I need these gloves to catch. And I don't know, like, some of them were, like, some of those guys were like, no, it's just, like, in your head. Like, mm-hmm. you don't need to focus on the glove, like, just soft hands. <laughs> like, so when you have the gloves on, you're probably, like, yeah. ten times easier. Yeah. And it does help. Like, the gloves do help a little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> You guys had a good team. You guys That was a fun, really well. fun year. For those of you guys that don't know... I mean, those of you guys that have been watching the podcast and stuff. I've actually mentioned my dad, and um, I think in every episode, every episode, and he knows because he'll he'll call me and he's like, he's like, I thought you weren't gonna mention me. It's like a joke now. He's all, but in the last like two minutes, he say my name. Or something. <laughs> so those are like some little Easter eggs for you guys. See if you guys can find, you know, the parts in the podcast where I mention him. And it's literally in every episode. We're on episode what seventeen? Seventeen. It's just little eggs, you know, here and there. <laughs> yeah. And it's like it's kind of it's funny now. It's like a joke. It's like, yeah. a, hey, little. you didn't mention me, you know. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, actually you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I just want to thank you for you know yeah. taking the time. I know you're busy. You're working like crazy, coming and just hanging out with this us. Is awesome. It's always fun, you know. I'm wondering. Just get, getting to you know, your knowledge just rubbing off on us. Your experience yeah. and stuff. It's yeah. cool, you know. I'm glad that we can hang and talk and enjoy each other. It means a lot to us, just like yeah. it means a lot to you. So, oh, yeah. I hope you can come back again. Yeah, you know? definitely. I, will. We, we, I would love to have you come back. Uh, yeah. Whenever I don't know, we we'll just got, do whatever we, we want. Got, we got stories for days. That's yeah. all. I, was, I, I, mean, got, I, I want to hear more. <laughs> we got all kinds of stories that we could tell. I mean, it could we go, go down on memory on. lane. Maybe we'll have yeah. like a memory lane yep. uh, podcast or something. Yeah. We'll just talk about all the good, the crazy times. Yep. Shout out to uh, little Henry. It's his birthday today. Yeah. yeah shout out Henry. to Henry. We Happy love you. Happy birthday, and uh, the most cutest kid I've ever yeah. seen. Uh, yes. Yeah. Shout, shout out to my son Luke. I miss you. Yeah, Luke. Luke. Think Shout out to Luke day. living in LA. We love you. Send us some graphic art. We'll Going pay back you. to Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Hannah for being yeah, our, uh, our intern, intern for the night. Yep. Intern. She's our fact checker. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh. She's like our young Jamie. <laughs> hey Hannah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys. We're about to wrap it up. Um my dad's off the grid on all social media and stuff, so <laughs> you can only find him on here. That's against the grain. No, it is against go, the grain. Go, go to my house. You'll find me in the yeah. room in the back. Yep. You know, if you guys want to. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have anything to drop? I don't. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you guys for Love having you. me. Love you too, man. <sighs> Love you guys. Stay riding with us. Yeah.